Next, we're going to classify electrons in an atom as either being valence or core electrons. The core electrons are the ones closest to the nucleus, and the valence electrons are the ones that are on the outside that are going to be especially important when we talk about bonding. So the rule is we're going to look at just elements in the S and the P blocks of the periodic table. If you have an element in the S block, the valence electrons are the outermost S. And in the P block, it's the outermost S and the outermost P. So for example, with carbon, we have two electrons in the 1S. We don't count those, but we do count the two electrons in the 2S, and we count the two electrons in the 2P. So carbon has a total of four valence electrons. A shortcut, instead of writing out the orbital diagram, is just look at the periodic table and find the group number. Carbon is in group number 14. The last digit gives you the number of valence electrons. So similarly, fluorine is found in group 17. Fluorine atoms will have seven valence electrons. And potassium in group number one has one valence electron. Next, we want to compare the sizes of atoms. A magnesium atom has a radius of about 160 picometers, and a barium atom is much larger, 222 picometers. Magnesium and barium are both found in group number two of the periodic table. The outermost electrons for magnesium are in a 3s orbital, and for barium, the electrons are found in a 6s orbital. Both orbitals are spherical, but the 6s is much larger than the 3s. As the quantum number n increases, the size of the orbital increases. This is a comparison between two elements in the same column, but if you look at two elements in the same row, for example silicon and chlorine, Silicon, 117 picometers, is larger than chlorine, 99 picometers. And at first glance, this trend looks the opposite of the previous trend that we were looking at. Silicon and chlorine are both found, their last electrons are in the 3p subshell of the periodic table. Silicon has two electrons in the 3p, and chlorine has five electrons in that 3p subshell. The difference between silicon and chlorine, both of these atoms have their electrons, their outermost electrons, in a 3p orbital. So we can't say that one 3p is larger than the other 3p just on the basis of what orbital it is. Instead, what we have to do is look at the effective nuclear charge. A major difference between silicon and chlorine is how many protons they have. The atomic number of silicon is 14, where the atomic number of chlorine is 17. So if you picture a nucleus in the middle of this 3p orbital, there are 14 positive charges for silicon and it has 14 electrons. If we're looking at the last electron, all the other electrons are blocking some of the positive charge of that nucleus. Compare that to chlorine. The amount of blocking is about the same. The blocking is called shielding. So the other electrons, for example, the 3s electrons, the 2s electrons, the 1s electrons, all of those electrons are blocking some of the positive charges. So the, the reason that chlorine is smaller is it has greater number of positive charges, which is going to increase the effective nuclear charge, what the last electron, what the outermost electrons feel when they are essentially looking at the nucleus. 17 positive charges are more attractive and they can pull on those electrons more closely than 14 positive charges. If you put both of these together, you can have a general trend of atomic size. 
So this rectangle is showing a generic periodic table. Size of atoms in general increases as you move down a column and the size increases as you move from right to left. If you go left to right, the effective nuclear charge, Z effective, increases and that's why atoms on the right side in a column are smaller than the atoms on the left side.